I appreciate it. Uh, welcome to our workshop on PolyVenture. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Josh Franco. I'm a professor of political science at Cuyamaca College in uh, San Diego County, California. Uh, we're in week six. So let me just introduce the workshop a bit and then we'll get into our uh, concept for today, which is network, and then we'll demonstrate it with the game. So <clears throat> uh, PolyVenture is a workshop series that explores how games relate to concepts in political science. And I'll be live streaming games and discussing how different elements of the game relate to political science. Uh, these workshops are live stream on Twitch on Wednesdays from 7.30 to 8. And you can go to polyventure.com to watch the live stream. Uh, our schedule for the fall has been the following. So we started back in October, uh, about a month ago, with the seven concepts. And then uh, for the past four weeks now, we've looked at communication, information, strategy, and moves. And now uh, week six, we're going to be exploring the concept of a network. Now, if you're interested, you can watch the summer recordings, which was like a dry run, uh, test run of this workshop. Uh, so we give an overview, uh, look at different games, talk about different concepts. And this was really formative in helping structure uh, the fall series. So again, you can watch the live stream on Twitch uh, from 7.30 to 8. All right, let's go ahead and jump to our week six concept of the network. Our learning objectives with this workshop uh, include the following. First, it's uh, by the end of this workshop, you'll be able to define the network. Uh, secondly, you'll be able to explain how networks are largely hidden in games. And uh, second, or thirdly, you can explain how networks exist with a real life political example. So recall that there's seven concepts that we're exploring with this workshop, uh, communication, information, strategy, and moves, uh, network probability, and signals. So, so far we've covered the first four, now we're on to the fifth, and then after Thanksgiving break, we'll cover probability and signals. Now, I decided on these seven concepts just because I felt like uh, they're ones that are um, useful to think about up front, uh, useful to get introduced to as you're uh, engaging with um, the uh, uh, the ideas of political science, and they're pretty generally applicable to games. So that nexus of those things kind of brings together uh, these ideas to the forefront. Now, some concepts to focus. The concept that we're focusing on today is the network, and there's basically two uh, values to it. One is a simple network, and the other is a complex network, right? So, simple networks basically has fewer objects and/or players, while a complex network has more objects and more players. And um, it's just helpful to think about why these are uh, essential aspects of uh, thinking about. Um, uh, political science, because in political science, we're always interested in uh, basically how actors, institutions engage with one another. Um, and we can keep it simple, like how the Congress interacts with the presidency and how the presidency interacts with the courts. Or we can think about it like how the uh, members of the House of Representatives, from the speaker to the minority leader and all of their leadership and members uh, interact with each other. So we can take uh, institutions as a whole, we can take the actors within those institutions and unpack them. And obviously in games, we can do that as well. So in operationalizing the concept, we'll think about simple and complex. And the gameplay for today will be on Clash Royale. Uh, so this is bringing back one of the games that we played, I think in week four. So let me go ahead and copy that slide over since um, that's always helpful. And um, let's just go ahead and and have that conversation about the gameplay with uh, Clash Royale. So I'm going to open my other screen here. Let's see. All right, looks like I'm set up already. And I think I had a couple of people trying to join via Zoom. And I'm going to check this out here. What's the story? Um, oh, I see. They're trying to um, join via Zoom. And I have to use Zoom because I have to stream my phone to the computer. Uh, so let me just make a note that they should check out the um, the, uh, the the live stream itself as opposed to the Zoom room since I can't have them in the Zoom room at the same time, I think. Uh, or at least I don't want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. All right. So here we're uh, in the app. Let me go ahead and open it again. And I'll turn on the sound. And obviously this is the beginning of the Clash Royale page. So it's like... You, know, you can shop for stuff. Here's your, my deck of cards that I'll be using. Um, whether I can battle or open a chest, so I'll open a chest because that's always fun to see what's inside. Um, and if you're not familiar with Clash Royale, there are 
YouTubes and tutorials that, <laughs> that talk about it and show you how to play. I won't be doing that. I'm just going to jump right into the game. Um, I'll go ahead and start unlocking this 12 hour chest. We'll see what shows up um, in 12 hours or so. Uh, different clients you can be a part of. So you might be saying, so how does this just simple interface of the game relate to networks? Well, if you think about it, each of these objects on the bottom is a node in a network. And then if I click on one, it expands into other aspects of cards. So when I click on cards, you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna look at some cards. Well, you can look at your different decks. You can look at your uh, emote, emote deck. You can look at your tower skins. You can look at your magic items. Right, so within the concept of cards, in the network concept of cards, it unpacks into these four things. And then just within the card, the battle deck, for example, you can see here that I have 10 different decks that I can go scroll through. So we have the idea of a network, we have the idea of a game Clash Royale, and it unpacks into these five bottom parts. And once we click on cards, we can then see it unpacks into battle deck and four, three other things. And then it packs further and unpacks further and unpacks further. So even though I'm talking about like, what's my relationship with this game as a sing, as a simple idea of a network or having fun playing a game, which is another idea of a network, we can unpack this game and realize that it's a pretty complex space in which to be in. And so know that even just the interface of any game is uh, network driven. And if you wanted to map this in a mind map or a brainstorm map, you could do that. And you can see just how complicated it is. So, for example, if we got to talk to the developers of this uh, game and the team of developers, they probably have like this giant flow chart somewhere in their offices. And it just shows like just how complicated this game can be uh, when you map it out um, in the form of a network. And so this is like exciting just in and of itself but obviously the the heart of this game is the battle and we'll go ahead and uh, engage in a battle here now you might be asking so how does the network play out here i'm gonna uh, just lower the volume just a tad and we'll see here right away that you'll see i have three towers on my side and they have three towers on their side and right away we're getting into this conflict where uh, i'm dropping troops they're dropping troops now you might be asking like, how does the network relate to this? Well, if we give it a little bit of sense of what's going on, uh, we see that as we're dropping different, um, I'll say uh, characters uh, into this match that they're having an effect or an influence on each other. And so you'll see here that I have this um, archer and she is able to fire from long range uh, at opponents, whether it's a moving opponent like these uh, dragon creatures or it's the towers themselves which are stationary, uh, we get a sense that there's a network involved. And what I'll do is I'll um, let this kind of get my elixir back up. And here I'm going to drop this flying machine in the back. And you'll see that it's slowly heading towards the closest of the three towers because it targets the structures, uh, whether they're towers or ones that are dropped by the opponent. And here you'll see that the flying machine is attacking the um, the tower itself, and now it's got uh, got destroyed by these spear goblins. And now we're kind of a little afraid of what's going on here because there's a lot of these uh, folks coming towards my tower. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a see if I can take a screenshot here. Oops, I prematurely ended that game. Let's see if I can turn it back on. Here we go. I've lost the sound because I pressed the button, but that's okay. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and drop one thing. I just want to take a screenshot here if it's going to let me. So take a screenshot, and I'm going to take, I think that should do it. And I'm going to go ahead and let this game run its course. I'll lose because I just want to demonstrate. Actually, I'm just going to end it here. I think it'll be a little easier for what I'm trying to do. So I'll go ahead and... Uh, um, take a picture here with my computer itself and let's just capture the screen great now here's the the screen of the game I was just playing and I want to point out a couple of things that just like illuminate how uh, much it matters to a game to have this kind of network space in it 
And let me go here. So first we have my tower, my main tower, and then I have my secondary tower. And I had my tertiary tower, but I lost it in the course of the game. And then my opponent also has um, their uh, towers as well. So I'm going to color them in a different color just so we uh, get a sense. So here's their uh, uh, main tower, second tower, and the third tower. And right away, you should start to see a network that's forming. Now, obviously, these towers can't move, so they and they can't attack each other. So there's actually no direct connection between them, and the connections happen when you have these different um, uh, moving uh, uh, battle cards played. So I'm going to circle this band of three dragons, this uh, spear goblin, this other spear goblin, and then this giant. Now, note that these were dropped. You know, one set went from here to here. Uh, the goblins came, were dropped here, and they moved all the way over here. And then the giant was also dropped from here, and they moved all the way across and down this way. Um, and now it starts to look like I'm playing a football or a soccer or some other kind of game where you have players and you're <laughs> setting up a play. And just know that each of these um, actors are heading towards this tower because it's the closest of the now two that are remaining. Um, and this is a network, right? This is a connection between different... Um, uh, different actors of this game and with just a simple game like Cl Clash Royale we can say well let's take a look at this game and, and what it means so I'm going to go ahead and uh, play one more time to demonstrate how some of these uh, other actors can engage with each other um, so let me go ahead and battle one more time <clears throat> alright so here we go again one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play First, this electric card on the t on the bottom right, and I'm gonna go ahead and strike the tower of my opponent. So now my opponent sent one of their miners to attack me, and I'm dropping a couple folks over. And just now I'm gonna drop my archer on the far right, and realize that the archer should turn and fire towards the um, the cannon giant, and that creates a network connection. Right in the sense that we're going here, they have a rocket launcher, and that person shoots, and then they spray. Not, they hit with their rocket, and then that rocket sprays out further. So here I'm going to drop my um, uh, one of my heavies, I call them, and they're going to go towards the tower. But they obviously got distracted with one of the opponents, and now I'm being attacked on all sides. So I'm going to put a zap. And if you take away the the cartoon, right, the drawing, the the uh, art work and you say like imagine that these were just dots right and they were able to uh you know just take away all the the, the skin right the 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 artwork and you'll be like these are just dots that are engaging with each other right some dots are stronger than others some dots move faster than others some dots have long range abilities while other dots have short range abilities and before you know it, it's like, well, that's the game we're playing, right? It's a network of these dots interacting with each other. But what makes it fun and fascinating is that there's characters, that there's storylines, that there's points you can collect, that there's these coins going on, that you win and you lose, that there's uh, you can play with your friends if you're a part of a clan. And like, you take a game at its basic level is basically dots bumping into each other or, or launching projectiles at each other. And that's fun, right? It's, it's a, it's, it's cool to engage with. I've probably spent a more than a few days in total time playing this. And part of it's just because it's interesting and it's engaging. So hopefully this gives you a sense of, of games that can be played and what it means to, um, essentially have uh, uh, a network underlying all that effort. Now, uh, what I'd like to do next is bring in an example um, from po politics to say like, you know, what, <laughs> how can we see a network going on here? And so let me go ahead and open up this uh, uh, website and I'm gonna uh, bring in this article here. And, oh, wrong link. There you go. 
So this article says redistricting squeezes two Democratic rising stars in Georgia. So let's go ahead and take a open up this article. And uh, byline is Republicans introduced a congressional map that could result in a member versus member primary between Democratic reps Lucy McBath and Carolyn Bordeaux. So let's go ahead and put this in read mode and let's have this uh, read to us. And then we'll talk about the network that is present um, in this um, in this article itself. So we'll go ahead and have this read aloud. Redistricting squeezes two Democratic rising stars in Georgia. 2022 elections. Republicans introduced a congressional map that could result in a member vs. member primary between Democratic reps Lucy McBath and Carolyn Bordeaux. In an attempt to contain the explosion of Democratic-leaning communities of color in the northern Atlanta suburbs, the GOP proposal transformed Bordeaux's turf into something heavily Democratic, while making McBath's seat much more Republican-friendly. Their goal, take two Democratic trending swing seats, and instead create one red district and one blue district. Then Congresswoman-elect Carolyn Bordeaux. The most likely outcome in Georgia after the next election would be a one-seat gain for Republicans, who currently control eight of the state's 14 seats. But in the immediate term, it could create a primary next spring between two incumbents angling for prominence in a state trending toward Democrats. Members being pitted against each other, it's an unfortunate consequence of redistricting, said Democratic Representative Hank Johnson, who represents a majority black district southeast of Atlanta. It could happen in Georgia. Their predicament is a classic redistricting math problem, two incumbents, one seat, but it's also a little more complicated. Gulp mapmakers placed the blue seat in Gwinnett County, a rapidly diversifying region that largely overlaps Bordeaux's current district, giving her a clear geographic advantage, though the congresswoman's home now just narrowly falls in a different seat. But McBath, who's in her second term to Bordeaux's first, has a larger political profile in Washington, D.C., and the Atlanta market, and she's been a stronger fundraiser. Bordeaux made clear in a statement on Wednesday that she would be seeking re-election in the new 7th district, which the campaign estimates includes roughly 60% of her current turf. Over the past year, it has been an honor to represent Georgia's 7th district in Washington, she said. The newly released congressional district map represents a majority of my current constituency. I look forward to being a voice for everyone in this new district as I continue serving our community. The 7th district also contains a slice of McBarthur's current seat, but not her home in eastern Cobb County. In a statement Wednesday, her campaign slammed that the NRA and the Republican Party who have made eliminating Lucy McBath from Congress their top priority in a remarkably undemocratic process. McBath herself wrote in a tweet that the map only strengthens my resolve to stay in Congress, but she did not specify in which district she would run. And the prospect of a clash looms. McBath's district has been transformed into one that former President Donald Trump would have carried by double digits in 2020, stretching into the deep red counties of Cherokee and Forsyth. If she wants to return to Congress in 2022, she will likely have to run against Bordeaux in the new 7th district. I can't comment on what she is going to do, said Democratic State Representative B. Nguyen, who represents DeKalb County. County and is vice chair for constituency groups in the state party. But what I will say is she is a well-respected and well-liked congresswoman in Georgia. And when she won that 6th congressional district, she made history, and she made herself a household name. So I see that she is going to continue to have a future in politics. It's not going to be easy to get rid of her. And so we have this uh, article. I'm going to pull up my uh, whiteboard here. And let's go ahead and just uh, unpack this a bit. Right. So first we have this sense of that there is two Congress members who are currently serving in office. Let's see if we can get a different color here. That's no, fine. So I'm just going to write down. Um, uh, actually, I need to move my my whiteboard over. Let me set that up really quick. <coughs> it's like instead of this screen, it has to go to that screen. Okay. <coughs> All right. So here's my whiteboard. And so we have, um, we'll say, uh, Lucy McBath. And here we have Cheryl Bordeaux. And as of right now, they're in separate districts, right? That they are, uh, they do not overlap with each other. So we're going to draw a box here to represent their her district and this person's district. Now, what's happened is that every 10 years, 
uh, based off of new U.S. Census data, which is a, a population count of every person living in the United States. Uh, that data is then used by states, uh, whether it's the state legislatures, the state uh, governors, uh, or some independent redistricting commission or quasi-independent redistricting commission to take that data and say, okay, how have uh, our populations uh, increased or decreased? And if we have a new congressional seat, then how do we add uh, another district in within the state boundaries or lines? Uh, and so with that new 10-year census data, uh, in this case, it sounds like the Georgia state legislature, so I'm just going to put Georgia state legislature, is saying we need to redraw the lines. And let me go ahead and zoom us down here. So they're going to redraw. Now, you might say, where's the network? Well, the network right away is that there's a shift in, um, there's an exercise of political power. In this case, it sounds like the Republican Party uh, is in control of the redistricting process. So we'll say our control of our district. And what they're looking to do is how do they maximize their power uh, in relation to the uh, opposing party, which in this case would be Democrats. So Republicans and the network of Democrats. Now, um, oops, drew an extra line there. <laughs> and so within these two groups, obviously there's vying, there's competition happening amongst Republicans, probably for seats that we're not hearing about in this article, but it's happening. And there's competition for power happening uh, between Democrats. And there's obviously competition happening between the two um, at that kind of party level, but there's probably interactions happening between the two at the individual level. But in this article's uh, case, it's focused on the um, the two incumbent Democratic members. So again, Lucy McBath and Cheryl Bordeaux. Now what's happened is that the Republican Party that's controlling the process has said, well, you guys' old districts had you separated, but now what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, basically group you together let's do that and let's see how you figure this one out so the question is who's going to run in whose district now it sounds like based on this article that 60 percent of this new district is Cheryl Bordeaux's old district while the remaining parts of it are um, Lucy McBath's district but there's obviously going to be tension between the two now, as the article goes on, it says like there's different political players. They have different views of what's going on. And so we can start to, we don't see it in the article, but we can infer that obviously the supporters of Lucy McBath are, are, are interacting with each other. So we're going to put happy face Lucy McBath and the folks who are happy face Cheryl Bordeaux who are like <laughs> now starting to look at each other with some degree of suspicion like, all right, friends, like, you know, the eye, raised eyebrow, like, what's going on here? And now before you know it, <laughs> we're starting to see this network unpack before us as we're reading this article. And so the power of all this is basically to show that um, in, in reading anything about politics, there's always going to be this um, this network that exists and this network of people, this network of relationships, this network of histories that are uh, uh, overlaid by political districts, uh, political histories, uh, political power dynamics that are going on, you know, whether it's at a national level between the president and the Congress and the courts or at a state level between the governor and the state legislature or between within parties like between Democrats or between parties like between Democrats and Republicans. And before you know it, like the network is pretty complicated pretty fast. But it's always helpful to think as you're reading through an article, and I wish this kind of happened. Maybe one day it will. It's like anytime somebody writes an article, they have like a little network map on the side that says, this is what it looks like. This is what we're trying to explain to you. Um, but overall, it gives you a sense of what's going on. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, we'll call it uh, an eye unless we have some discussion, which we might. But I think it's a little quiet for today because we're going into the Thanksgiving weekend. So my hope is that with all this, that you get a sense that the network obviously can be simple, right? Or it can be complicated. And now any network can be as complicated as you'd like, but you can probably collapse into something very simple. 
So if you ask someone, tell me about your family, they might say, well, let me tell you about my relationship with me, between myself and my parents, right? That's a simple network. Or they might, when they ask, when they're asked that question, tell me about your family, they talk about their brother's cousin and their sister-in-law's dog. And like, before you know it, the idea of the network gets really complicated, really fast. And you're like saying, okay, wait a minute, how does that work? And so people can uh, make it as simple or as complicated as they like. And my hope is that you saw that in the game of Clash Royale, where you're like, well, how does that work? Well, if you position the tower, the towers are fixed, but if you move your your battle cards in a particular place, it lets them connect with others. Uh, it lets them uh, make contact with others. But if you take away the the artwork, you just see like little dots, you know, bumping into each other or uh, launching projectiles at each other. So it's like that old uh, game, like the centipede game or the games back in days of old where it was just like pong, right? Like these, these two things moving along and this ball getting bounced around. And then we can see it like in real life where we're hearing about people, we're hearing about their political affiliation, we're hearing about their, their politics. And you might get like engrossed in that story and what's going on. But at the end of the day, it's like there's two political actors and they're having a, a competition over something. And their supporters would obviously have a competition over that because they're going to be drawn into camps. And before you know it, you see a, a network go from simple to complex. So hopefully this helps in uh, understanding what a network is and realizing that it's obviously in the games that we play uh, and it's obviously in politics as well. So with that, thanks for taking the time to listen in and have a great uh, night.